and good afternoon everyone. Uh, it's a long title and there's just two things that I need to say before I begin. The wraparound model of content development. I know today there are a number of instructional designers, learning persons who are involved in working with design and courses. This is not like the ADI model or anything that we use for instructional design. This is really a model that allows us to design course materials wrapped around open education resources. So it reduces the need for students to purchase textbooks and also reduces their cost. Because in the Caribbean, which I have, does this work? Yeah. Oh, I'm pointed. Okay. How do I go forward? How do I go forward to the slide again? Oh, it's there now. Okay, great. Great. <laughs> Thank you. So you'll see a map. It's easier for me to look down than to look up. You'll see a map here of the Caribbean, and you will note that I have tried to identify where we are located. There is a little block on the map to the right that shows you where we are in relation to the rest of the world. So North America would be up to the left, and Europe will be over to the right. Okay, so these are the islands where we have, I have the orange lines, those are the islands that comprise the open campus. I just need to tell you that. So you'll see that it's, we're small, we're scattered. Our economies are fledgling economies. We're developing countries, developing islands. So cost is a very important element for us when we are looking at students and getting them into our campus. Our campus also is not funded by governments because, of course, they are also dealing with challenges. So we're very much dependent on student fee income. We can't charge a very high, income, a high fee to come into our courses, so we have to keep costs down. So hence, open educational resources and the wraparound concept. So if we can just go to the next slide. I'm not comfortable with using this at all. I'm sorry. Can you help me moving to the slides? Thank you very much. Okay, so the project, wrap around versus content and support. Content and support is really where we were before 2014. Content and support really looks at us designing course materials, working with course developers who are subject matter experts. So we work with them independently. So an instructional designer, if that person is assigned to work on developing courses in a program, if you take a bachelor's program, that's about 30 courses. And they would be working with 30 subject matter specialists. We try to break it up, look at courses by level, so they may be working with five to ten courses at any one time. They were working individually with these persons, so the benefits of all of the training and all of the experience was just going one-to-one. -one. Then, of course, you have multimedia designers who would be working with that content, and again, that would be one-to-one. -one. So you're not getting the benefit of a team kind of effort. So we realized that there were issues that we needed to look at, one of the things that drove us was the strategy for the academic division. We were no longer able to sustain such a model. We had to produce content very rapidly, and we had to find a way to make this work. So what we did there is we looked at a process using a project management process, and we, by chance, we happened upon the Agile Learning Design model that allowed us now to bring our teams together so all of our content experts who are working in a particular program, if we are working on, let's say, year one courses, they can all be together in an online environment, working collaboratively so that they're sharing, they're knowing what each other is doing, so that you find that the courses can be sequential, there's no overlapping because everybody knows what everybody else is doing and we are following a particular plan. So we recognize that that needed to happen and we started that process of moving and transitioning. Of course, there are implications there for the departmental operations. We are looking at working differently with content persons. We are looking at our instructional designers working differently to support these individuals. And of course, there is an impact on our production teams to produce materials. So we found that it was easier now to design our learning activities around that OER content because we had everybody working collaboratively together. We thought it would be a good idea to move persons into that, um, into that way of thinking. So if I can go quickly to the Agile Learning Design slide, please. Thank you. So 
Yasmin was just talking about some of the characteristics when you look at agile learning, and particularly we recognize that there is an opportunity to be collaborative. It, there was also an opportunity for us to work in an iterative manner. We also recognize that we could be flexible with the model. We could be very creative in what we did in terms of helping our subject matter experts to design authentic learning activities. We could be very responsive because if we are working in a project management kind of environment, we can respond very quickly to things that need to be changed. And of course, we had to be very lean because we are talking about developing a number of courses in a short space of time and we need to do things in a very clean and clinical manner so that we can move ahead very, very quickly. Some of the support strategies that we had to use was, of course, we had to have an emphasis on cross-functionality. We could not just operate one-on-one, -on -one, so we had to look at bringing all members of the particular team together. We had to have an emphasis on interactions. People had to be able, they had to feel very comfortable. So if you, we are in an online environment, as I showed you in the map, we are scattered. So your content expert could be in Germany, your content expert could be in Canada, anywhere, and I am leading the team, I'm based in Trinidad, some of my instructional designers are in another island in Jamaica, another in another island in Barbados, so we're all over the place. So we really needed to be able to interact in a way that brought meaning to what we were doing. Also, we want to have usable deliverables. We don't want to just design content and when it goes into the learning environment, it's not meaningful to the students, it's not meaningful to the, the persons who are leading the courses. We also looked at an emphasis on rapid and decisive response to change initiatives. People are very, you know, change is very difficult for most of us, for all of us. And you had people who were working in a particular way over a period of many years. And now you're asking, listen, we are in a change environment. This is how we are going to be looking at design and content. And you found that there are persons who just could not step up to the plate. But we were already in that situation. So the head honcho had to pull, hold the hands and pull people along. It was very, very painful. And the head honcho act, had to actually do some of the work in the end so that when the time came for the course to be delivered, there was something that was available to go into our learning environment. So we had to keep you know, a kind of process going that was very, 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 very quick. We depended a lot on templates because there was no other way to get it done and to ensure that we could do it in the time frame that we needed to because we looked at a four month period for design, development, and review of an entire course. And you're talking about more than 30 courses and in our first phase of development, we were doing something like 57 courses. So it was a bit crazy if you can think of it like that. So let's look at some views from the literature very quickly with regard to Agile. The key features for our department staff, rapid, responsive, targeted approaches, and lean. So very much a project management approach to what we needed to do. And we found that persons are not, they were not really prepared for that change. They wanted to stay in the old environment and do what they were doing because they were comfortable. And now you had somebody looking over their shoulder. One of the other things is that as the head of department, I could not see everything because everybody was doing it in their little corner. So I could not actually see what was happening. Now we are in the online environment, we are collaborative. I am in there and I'm looking at everything and I can comment on everything and I can say, no, this is not working the way it should be. Look back at this, these learning objectives. How are you going to measure that? You know, that does not go together. You need to relook this. That wasn't happening before because I couldn't see it. So suddenly there they had somebody in their face all the time in the online environment, managing that process and trying to bring it to where we needed it to be. So this is, this, this is one of the things that we learned from Miles, that agile learning, living with the speed of change, that's in one of, it's in one of the, um, an international journal that the key finding that Miles found when they, when they looked at, it's Andre and Miles, when they looked at this view from the literature in a management setting is that the majority of employees see their colleagues as a more valuable resource for acquiring new skills or knowledge than their internal learning management systems. And I wanted to be able to apply that to what was happening in our environment. In terms of a learner-centric view, 
the key features for our learners because ultimately we are developing courses for the use by our learners, so we had to factor them in. We had to ensure that our courses had some real world relevance, that there would be some flexibility, both in terms of the learning styles that the students would be able to use, and in terms of the types of resources that we are able to provide for them, and also that they can go look for for themselves using the kinds of guidelines that are there in the materials. We also had to be very nimble in terms of preparing our courses for the students, and of course, 21st century skills. Those were just so critical, and it's something that we hadn't concentrated on before. So this was an opportunity to bring in, you know, go digital, look at the kinds of multimedia communication skills that we wanted to develop in our students, critical thinking skills, innovativeness, all of these things we had to ensure would have been included in the courses that we were designing. So if we move now to Project Center, am I doing the time? All right. So the key elements that we thought that we needed to have for the success of our projects and moving our course development into this um, flexible and dynamic kind of environment is, of course, that we wanted to be iterative, we wanted to be collaborative, we wanted to be have creative opportunities available. Because if you're talking about project management, you're talking about being very rigid and moving things along in a particular way, but we recognized that we had to do differently. So in terms of what was happening in the courses, while we had the courses, the development cycle structured in such a way where they would have to develop a course outline, then they would have to do a course plan that would give all of the elements of what we were going to include in the course materials. And then of course, they designed the course materials using the wraparound concept. We realized that it, it could not be a linear thing. It could not be just moved from one directly into the other. So while we had a course outline and, and they worked on the course plan, when they were working on the course plan, we would have realized that there were things that need, needed to change. Go back, look at your course outline, then you move on, you continue on with your materials. As you're doing your materials, you realize that there are some resources that, have, that, that you really need to include, so you have to keep going back. So that meant that we had to be meeting constantly, so we were working through meet, weekly meetings, trying to figure out what, would, what were the problems, if there were any, what we needed to change, what we needed to do, and continue on in that type of process. Of course, working together in the online environment. Why? There's another slide here. I'm not going to go into it. What I want to do is go to the next slide, which really shows, you know, for the student, this is what we, this is, this is why we were doing what we were doing. We wanted students to be able to move from a point where they could filter information they could select information so they could know what, is, what they would be practicing when they get into the real world. They would have to be able to integrate information because, of course, we want them to be able to use whatever we are, we are providing in that material and provide them with that kind of authentic experience that we want. And, of course, for them to figure out what have I learned and how will I be using this new knowledge and skills that have developed in a real world environment. So there's a lot of authenticity going on here. So next slide, quickly. How we did it, as I said, we, we talked through our process that we used prior to 2014, and there were a number of processes that we used prior to 2014. So we, we consolidated, we re-engineered, we had a number of templates that were designed, we revised all of our protocols, and of course, we redesigned our collaborative work spaces. So we, we work right now in a Moodle environment where we have everybody interacting just as the students would in if they're using our learning and, um, the learning management system. Project management approach, we had targets, we looked at the risk assessment, we held those weekly meetings, we always had the briefing at the end of each stage, and of course we had to have some contingencies in place, and what our outcomes were, human performance, of course, you have the departmental leadership, you know, persons had to look at how I worked, what kind of leadership I brought to them, and we interrogated that. How effective were the teams in that process? We have interrogated that. Our processes, we have done that. And what kinds of lessons have we learned? We are still finding ourselves in a situation where some of our multimedia requests are not linked to generative strategies of learning. We need to focus more on quality of learning activities. We recognize that. And we need to have all of this linked to recall integration, organization, and elaboration strategies throughout project implementation. So whatever we do in terms of the development, we have to use these kinds of strategies to help our students over the line. Okay? And I think I end here. Thank you. Okay. Thank Ooh. you.